On March 5th, Jennifer Catron of Fredericksburg, Virginia, walks up the gangplank to the cruise ship Costa Luminosa, operated by Costa Cruises and owned by Carnival Corporation. Going on. Oh my gosh. What? She's documenting her first solo trip without her husband or children. We're going to go exploring the ship. The ship was scheduled to leave Fort Lauderdale that evening, sail south through the Caribbean and east across the Atlantic. But by this point, the new coronavirus was already spreading in countries outside of China, including an outbreak in February on the Diamond Princess, also owned by Carnival. More than 700 people on that ship had been infected and seven had died, according to the World Health Organization. Carnival kept cruising. Over the two weeks Jennifer spent on the Costa Luminosa, she recorded more than 100 separate videos of herself and her fellow passengers. Jennifer's videos offer a look at life on board the ship. The Costa Luminosa, like the Diamond Princess before it, became a floating incubator, putting passengers and crew at risk and helping to spread the virus around the world. Carnival said that COVID-19 has spread rapidly throughout communities, and cruise ships are literally microcosms of what is occurring in major population centers. The story of the Costa Luminosa begins on February 29th. An Italian passenger is taken off the ship in the Cayman Islands and to a local hospital. He is suffering from double pneumonia and has had a heart attack, according to subsequent interviews with his son. The Luminosa then heads south to Mahogany Bay, Honduras. It turns north to Cozumel, Mexico. Then it heads east to port in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, where it will pick up more passengers, including Jennifer. So far, I think it's gonna be great. You know, when I first boarded and I started walking around, I thought, oh my gosh, I'm gonna get so bored. I got my itinerary for tomorrow and I completely changed my mind. The Costa Luminosa departs Fort Lauderdale on the evening of March 5th and sails south along the Bahamas. It arrives in the port of San Juan, Puerto Rico on March 8th. Hundreds of passengers disembark. Jennifer heads to the old city. So beautiful. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. People here are friendly. There's already people in the bars and restaurants. Jennifer returns to the ship. An ambulance picks up an Italian passenger in respiratory distress and takes her to a local hospital. A Coast Guard spokesman says the Luminosa didn't tell authorities about illnesses aboard the ship while it was docked. Carnival said it was acceptable to notify them after the fact in view of the emergency nature of the passenger transfer. The Coast Guard is investigating. The ship leaves Puerto Rico and sets sail for St. John's Antigua on the evening of March 8th. They arrive the following day, but are denied entry. The government said the Luminosa did not inform them in a timely fashion that there had been a passenger on board with symptoms of an infectious disease. Carnival said that the Luminosa followed the required regulatory protocol. The Costa Luminosa then turns east and heads out into the open ocean. Staff members are cleaning a lot more. They're doing surfaces. People are still serving themselves in the buffet. And people are still congregating and activities are still going on on board. <coughs> right now, there's um, not a whole lot left. As you can hear, there's still coughing in the background. The ship heads into the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Group activities keep up much as they had before. People congregate in restaurants and in bars. Okay, so here's life on the ship after we just found out that there are no ports in Spain that are willing to take us. We don't know where we're going to refuel. People are still milling around. This is Friday the 13th, March 13th, 2020, guys. And we are on a boat um, with no place to go. I am seeing this situation deteriorate hour by hour. We're not quite at a minute by minute deterioration at this point. The party continues. In the early morning hours on Saturday the 14th, passengers gather for a sing-along. Jennifer discovers some bad news. Found an article online saying that the lady in San Juan was positive. It's 
it's actually getting pretty real. Late that night, the ship confirms the couple dropped off in San Juan have coronavirus, two of the island's first three cases, according to the governor. By March 15th, more bad news. Jennifer has learned that the Italian passenger who disembarked in the Cayman Islands in late February has died with COVID-19. The Costa Luminosa is docked in the port of Santa Cruz de Tenerife in Spain's Canary Islands. The passengers are not allowed to disembark. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Please, officers. They're serious about that. They just don't want anybody getting off. They don't want anybody jumping ship. Three sick passengers and their travel companions leave the ship to seek medical care. <coughs> On the evening of the 15th, the ship announces that passengers are to return to their rooms. By the morning of March 16th, all restaurants are closed. May I have your attention, please? In regards to the passengers who disembarked in Tenerife, we have no further updates on their condition, and again, we will update you as soon as is possible. Last night, I woke up at 2 o'clock, and I thought it was 2 p.m. I have no windows in here. There's nothing. It's a, literally the size of a closet. The bed takes up the entire room. I'm having a hard time allaying my doubts and my fears to try and trust the people that are in charge. It is March 19th, and the Costa Luminosa arrives at the port of Marseille. The French government has given the ship permission to dock. Please strictly follow our instructions that you have received regarding your disembarkation. Our teams are working around the clock in a situation which is evolving very rapidly. The French government has given the ship permission to dock, and more than 700 passengers prepare to disembark. Italian passengers remain on board until the ship reaches its final destination in Italy. Jennifer and others wait for hours in buses on the dock. Multiple passengers report there is little or nothing to eat. After nightfall, they are escorted by police cars to the airport to catch a plane chartered to take them to Atlanta. The plane takes off after midnight. Several passengers interviewed by the journal witness others collapsing, though it's not clear if it's from illness or exhaustion. Jennifer helps tend to the sick. The plane lands in Atlanta early on the morning of March 20th. Passengers without fevers are allowed to walk into the airport and to connecting flights. Jennifer collapses in the airport. She gets to a hotel to quarantine. So I ended up in the emergency room last night or yesterday morning after at the uh, airport. I guess the doctor said it was just pure exhaustion from not having slept or from not having um, food for so long. So hopefully we'll go home soon. Jennifer Katrin returned home on April 1st. She was never tested for coronavirus. She since joined a class action lawsuit against Costa Cruises. Carnival says it cannot confirm how many people on board the Luminosa have since died with COVID-19. But passengers have been crowdsourcing their own unofficial tally through a Facebook group. So far, they've counted 15 dead. <laughs>